What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at the French and Arsenal legend Robert Pires. Now before I get into this review I want to give a huge shout out to Pro Sensitivity requesting Pires um, as well as complimenting me. I appreciate it man and I'm sorry if it took a while um, to get out this review but I'm trying to get to everyone's request as soon as possible. Um, and this is the first part of a double review in which I also have Freddie Lungberg in the team as you can see there. Um, I have these two in the same team um, because they were both known for their time at Arsenal um, with the famous Invincibles. Um, and I also obviously have them in a full Arsenal squad um, with my favorite formation, the 4-3-3 fourth variation. Um, this team played very well for me and I think I only lost one game with them. I'm currently in Division 3 and it's getting really hard for some reason and I am not exactly sure why, um, but I'm trying to keep going. Um, anyways, guys, let's go ahead and take a look at Pires' face card stats. 86 pace, 79 shot, 86 passing, 86 dribble, and 62 physical. Um, he also has that 4-star weak foot along with 4-star skill moves. He also has a medium-medium work rate, and he's quite a big guy for a winger. He's at six foot one, um, and in the 6 games I played with him, I scored 6 goals and had 1 assist. Probably could have had more assists. Um, had I not been so unlucky, you'll see in some clips where I hit like the bar consecutively three times with Cazorla. Uh, didn't really make sense, but I love playing with Pires. He was a great winger. I mean, he's very comparable to Pavel Nedved, um, and I will leave Nedved's link down below. I already did a review on him. If you guys want to compare um, th those two wingers, obviously those are like the two two of the better winger choices on the left side um, as legends go. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take a look at Pires's in-game stats and then the highlights thereafter. Robert Pires's in-game stats, guys. 85 attack positioning, 88 vision, 85 acceleration, 86 sprint speed, 89 ball control, 86 crossing, 87 curve, 86 dribbling, 88 short pass, a 4-star weak foot, 4-star skill moves. He's got that medium-medium work rate, dribbler crosser specialities, and the finesse shot trait. Well, this card's pretty balanced, guys, and Pires definitely shows that in his gameplay. So we're going to go ahead and get into some gameplay now for Pires. And before I get into the pros and cons, I just want to give a little bit more information on top of what I said a bit earlier. Um, Pires was a part of the famed Arsenal team, given the name the Invincibles. Um, for when in the 0304 season, they remained unbeaten, which is a pretty amazing feat. Um, he also is known for his success with France on the international level. Another fun fact was in FIFA 14, Pires actually had a left and right mid card. I think that's pretty cool, and I wish he still had that. Um, but let's get into the pros and cons with the uh, Pires of Pires' card. And the, we're going to start with the pros. Um, the first pro being his shooting. With the 79 shot rating, I didn't expect him to be that much of a scorer. Um, but more of a setup man, but I definitely felt as though I looked uh, to him to do a lot, and that included shooting. He has a powerful shot, and when he goes in on goal, he does a good job to weave in and around defenders to set up these shots. And I only had one long shot with him, which was a nasty knuckler, um, but most of his goals were within the six-yard box. Um, close range, he is definitely very effective. Second is his pace. I definitely noticed how fast Pires was. He was definitely faster than Pavel Nedved and just as fast as Ryan Giggs. He was able to use his pace to fly up and down the wings. His explosive cuts and bursts forward really expanded his gameplay and made him a huge threat. I have played with Pires on FIFA 15 and I definitely think um, his pace was more effective on 15 just with the gameplay differences um, and the gameplay slowing down in FIFA 16. Um, he wasn't as effective as he could be on FIFA 15. Nevertheless, he nevertheless he still was effective though. Um, third is his passing. Like I said earlier, he could have easily had more assists had I not been so unlucky. Um, he does a good job of the ball of fitting the ball in tight spots as well as switching the play as you saw right there. That one wasn't as accurate, but he still did a good job to get it off. Um, with Lungberg and uh, Pires, I did this as as much as I could to open up the play um, by switching it from wing to wing and using their pace. I'm um, in this team. I felt as though I looked to Pires to deliver the crucial goals and passes, for which the most part he did. Now, I only have one con for Pires, and that was his stamina. I mean, it really was probably my fault for the most part. Um, Pires is naturally a left mid with a medium medium work rate. Um, putting him up top in the left wing position, I think it forced 
um, him to use all of his speed up by the 70th minute. Um, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind while buying Perez and for what role you look to put him in and on your team. Um, and in my opinion, because of his work rate, he's more of a left mid, just because. Um, using him as a left winger depleted his stamina because he's got the medium defensive work weight where he feels he has to get back more. Um, stamina is definitely crucial um, in the long run if you want to get that go-ahead goal or maintain your lead in this FIFA. But like I said, guys, Perez was still dominant, and I love this card. Um, but this is going to take me now into the overall summary of Robert Perez's card, and I think that out of a 10 scale rating, um, he deserves an 8.9 out of 10. His pros and cons are listed as well as the goals and assists I had in the games played. I gave him a .1 under a 9 um, because I think that he isn't as quite valuable as Pavel Nedved, who received a 9 out of 10. Um, and what separates them is Pavel's 5-star weak foot, which is definitely huge on this game. Um, however, Perez played such an important role on my team and was involved in every part of the game. I had so much fun playing with him, and I definitely recommend him if you want a pacey winger. Um, up next in my reviews is the second part of this double review with Freddie Lundberg, and then we're going to go with Henrik Larsson, Louis Figo, and Michael Owen in that order. Um, and as always, it's going to be a busy week, guys, but I will try to get out as many reviews as I can. Feedback is always appreciated, and if you're feeling crazy, hit that like or subscribe button. I appreciate you guys checking out this review, and until next time, I will talk to you later.